Hi guys, welcome to this new video from our side. You're with me, Arun Sharma, and I am a I am Bangalore alumnus, author with McGraw Hill for the CAT series of books, and also a 22-time CAT qualifier, several 99.9 plus percentiles. My highest score has been 99.99 three times, and of course, I have also scored 100 percentile in data and prediction many times. And hence, uh, in today's video, I'm going to talk to you about data and prediction and logical reasoning. Uh, it's a very important section for you. It's very important because of the fact that it's kind of a make or break section for the CAT. In fact, uh, for me, uh, in my 22 attempts at CAT, my first attempt at CAT also, this was actually the section that got me through because I was uh, good at points and, and verbal, but but DI was was absolutely smashing for me. And, and if you can actually create this, and you can have a smashing data and prediction logical reasoning section, it is in a way a shortcut to getting into the hands because of the fact that and getting into the top I am because of the simple fact that that the data and prediction logical reasoning prep prep cycle is the shortest of the three prep cycles when you talk about preparing for verbal preparing for D, uh, quants versus preparing for data and prediction logical reasoning if you get things right it's the shortest of the three cycles and why it's so critical to do uh, do well at this section is because of the fact that the section has four sets 20 questions five questions per set and typically if you can get through the analysis required to get through one set in data and prediction you get all the five questions of the set so so the differential you're trying to solve a set not able to get it but through the preparation you are trying to solve the set and you're able to get get it because your preparation was solid and you're able to cross over the difficulties of doing that set and you can get to the outcome in the set so one set from not being able to solve it to being able to solve it if you can transform it what happens is you get 15 marks in the exam. 15 marks in the exam at various scores is, is worth somewhere around, I mean, in the in the lower scores, it's even worth 15 percentile. In, at the higher level of scores, it might convert a 97 percentile to a 99 percentile, uh, a 99 percentile to a 99.7 percentile, etc. So it's going to be, so when you, when you take the cat, you're going to face with this situation where the challenge would be that I'm picking up the set, can I get through it? If I can, I'm give, creating a huge impact on my on my score, and no other section has this this thing. Maybe a little bit in RC that you get a full RC set correct, it does jump your score by 12 to 15 marks. But otherwise, in points to get the same effect on your score, you need five questions done. In DI, one set done, and 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 that's that's the challenge. So pick it up as challenge. That's my first advice to you. Pick it up as, as a challenge that I am going to be the one who's going to crack this section. And in this video, I'm talking to you about how to do it. When you start doing your data and prediction, logical reasoning, solving in the CAT, or even for your practice and your and your preparation, you'll start to realize that one of the key aspects of uh, the difficulty that people face in data and prediction, logical reasoning sets, essentially, is the fact that you have to execute a series of 10 to 12 steps in order to get one, one set right. And of course, as I said, if you get the set, you get all the questions of the set normally. So. The, given the fact that it's a, it's a long series of steps that you have to do, uh, the, the problem that most people face is the ability to execute all these series of steps. But if you go deeper into that problem and you start understanding what the problem actually is, you'll realize that out of these 10 to 12 steps that an DILR set asks you normally to do, almost 80% of those, of those steps are schoolboy level steps, which means even a schoolboy should be able to understand those level of steps. It's only a couple of steps, one step here, one step there, in, in, inside a question, which might be the reason why you are not able to solve sets. So if you start breaking down why am I not able to solve sets inside DILR, you'll start realizing that you face certain situations in your solving where you get stuck inside the problem. And that's where you have to actually apply some advanced thinking, some advanced structures of thinking to be able to move out of it. Now, the good part about preparation is that these situations that you face and these aspects that you face which which actually block your solving the schoolboy steps all of you will be able to do i mean even with this basic little, little bit of common sense you'll be able to do the schoolboy steps and then it's a matter of confidence that okay i'm 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 i believe in myself and hence i'll be able to execute these these steps but what you need to learn and what you need to focus on your learning on are those couple of steps which are the speed breakers or which are the 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 barriers to getting through the through the set and, and that, that's people who are not able to get those through, through those barriers remain on the I can't solve DI, I can't solve LR uh, group and people who can start crossing those barriers. So so it's, it's one of the journeys that, that you have to undertake 
in order to become good at DIYer. And the good news about these these barriers is that most of these barriers are are pretty repetitive and pretty pattern based. It is not random barriers. So most of the times you'll start seeing that inside a reasoning set or inside also a logical DI set, there's one clue which you're not able to use partly or fully, which is the reason you're not able to get through the set. Or maybe a, a analysis situation in a logical DI set has thrown up a multiple possibility situation for you. And you are not able to handle that multiple possibility situation because you have not trained yourself to think multiple possibility inside questions. So, and or maybe there, there's a, a data interpretation set with some missing data, and you are not able to work out how to analyze and and work out all the clues to get the missing data in place. So these are the typical patterns of of structures which which are the barriers to getting through the DI, DI set. And of course, practice becomes an important part, but smart practice will be very critical for you to be able to make sure that okay i got stuck in this barrier once i get stuck in the stuck in this barrier twice but now i know how to cross this barrier and once i have learned how to cross this barrier i can the third time the fourth time the 10th time the 20th time when i face that barrier i know i know i got i'm equipped i'm i'm mentally equipped to cross that that's the preparation structure and preparation strategy that you need to adopt. So what's the roadmap of preparation for logical reasoning? Let's let's look at these as two different subjects, logical reasoning, then data and prediction, and then of course inside the cat when you actually solve sets, you'll find sets which have a mix of logical reasoning and, and data and prediction, which I'll talk about in, when I talk about the roadmap for DI. So when you do logical reasoning, essentially the first thing you do in logical reasoning is you familiarize yourself with the typical cat level, cat kind of sets or cat kind of puzzles so those include uh, if you if you look at my book uh, in logical reasoning i put them in the first eight nine chapters of the of the book uh, under chapter headings like arrangements selections uh, puzzles uh, quantitative reasoning uh, network diagrams set theory games and tournaments cubes and dice so these kind of chapters you will see and this is the list of chapters that you can see uh, which uh, which uh, you actually uh, do to to familiarize yourself ki dilr hota kya and once you have have done this and typically the, the general thumb rule is you do around 20 20 sets on each of these question types so that you understand you get into your groove of what lr is all about and once you are done with that the next step is to i mean please understand one thing while these are topics they are not chapters like in maths so there is no theory in these topics so you you really don't study klr ka theory ke, except i think set theory is, is the only chapter in lr which has some theory Otherwise, there's no theory. It's, it's just reacting to, to logical uh, puzzles and logical uh, language that you that you face in uh, in an LR puzzle of, of various kinds. And you you start realizing that after some time, all these structures start and all the language that you face start becoming repetitive repetitive uh, in nature. So so once you are done with those uh, maybe 100 to 150 sets of uh, of the basic uh, uh, on the basic topics, you have to basically move move into into uh, into miscellaneous or into mixed solving of logical reasoning and because there's no theory you don't study any theory the focus you have only two tools to learn uh, logical reasoning one is you do i mean the essential tool is just problem solving which is of two types assisted problem solving where somebody is showing you how to solve a set so that you can get in the course in our mindworks program we have a lot of assisted problem solving from my side and all other teachers to, to help students understand what LR is all about. And then we also have self-problem solving, which is uh, which is where you, you grapple with problems and learn how to cross over those those difficult questions when, when clues become difficult, when when you have those barriers to solving questions uh, placed in, inside the set. You will always realize that a good quality set, a well, well-structured set will always give you a way to get, get past. I, I, when I'm creating a tough question, as a question setter, I always have to give you a solution to the question. I cannot leave you without a solution to the question because if I do that, then the question is wrong. So please remember this, every set you are solving has a solution. And if you take that attitude into your self-problem solving, uh, through a mix of assisted problem solving and self-problem solving, you keep learning and you keep upgrading your problem solving skills for logical reasoning. And typically the general thumb rule before you start evaluating where you are heading to in LR is you do around 50 sets of uh, assisted problem solving and do around 200 to 250 sets of uh, self problem solving. I have seen people uh, uh, making sure that the LR is really good even at 100 sets of self problem solving 
but just general thumb rule the general advisory is that you should try to get through around 200 to 250 sets of self problem solving and uh, based on your timeline of course the work remains the same whether you're preparing in a 12 month framework or a 6 month framework or a 3 month framework the work will remain the same but you will vary the amount of work you'll do to make sure that these two numbers uh, are adhered to and one very important point while doing a self problem solving is that based on your skill level you might not be able to solve every set that you come across so there'll be a rejection rate there'll be a rate of not being able to solve questions so if you solve 100 percent questions try 100 questions you might be able to solve 60 60 question sets and not not solve the other 40 and like i always say the focus has to be not key i'll ask somebody how to do this the focus has to be that it's part of my self problem solving regime so i'll get i'll get stronger i'll get stronger at at thinking on these uh, situations and I'll come back and I'll, I'll crack these these sets. If you do that, then I think 200 to 50 sets should be more than enough. And of course, once you get through this much, by that time, you should also, I mean, if you're in June, July, August, you would also have started your uh, doing your mock tests and all. And you'll also start looking at uh, beyond around this time, you'll also start looking at past CAD papers and the questions of the past CAD papers. And when you start doing uh, those, uh, you will automatically be able to evaluate is your LR skills on, on par with what is required or you're still deficient and in case you're still deficient at any point of time the, the solution is to assisted problem solving plus self problem solving so if I if I find that I'm not so good at LR you, after doing 250 sets and 50 sets of assisted uh, if I find I'm not so good at LR my solution will be okay I'll sit with 100 sets this week and I'll solve 100 sets and when I do that anybody solves 100 sets 50 sets you, you have to think in those quantums so you start thinking those quantums, you'll start realizing that you'll keep getting better and keep getting stronger. It will give you an outcome the moment you start doing that. So this is the LR prep cycle. And uh, let's now look at the data and prediction prep cycle. The data and prediction cycle goes parallel to the LR cycle. Uh, and uh, whether you start DI along with your LR or you want to delay DI a little bit depends on your quant skills. Because data and prediction uh, depends on a few chapters in quants. Specifically, percentages, averages, uh, allegations, mixtures, uh, and uh, and ratio proportion. These four chapters become very critical, and the language of those chapters become very critical to understand DI, uh, the language that you'll say, see in DI. So if you're not very good at those chapters, you've forgotten those. Then the advice is that first do those four chapters, and then come to uh, come to start uh, data and prediction. So your data and prediction preparation can be uh, uh, can can be around can start around 20 25 days after your reasoning preparation if that is the case. Otherwise, if you don't have a problem in, in understanding those concepts and, and the language from those chapters, then you can start your DI profession along with your LR profession. And LR, DI, may even, even the chapters, the topics are not there in the sense that I don't think pie chart is a topic because of the fact that if I represent something on a pie chart and ask you a question, the same data I can put, I can transfer to a table and ask you a question. So table and pie chart, pie chart are not really two tough topics. They are just data representations. So you can spend maybe a week to 10 days to understand what data and predictions are. But the gist of DI is, is to be structured through the same uh, two tools, assisted problem solving and self problem solving. And you do a mix of the two. And at, at the Mindworks course, we have, in fact, I have recorded more than 200 to 250 sets uh, in all on LR plus DI for uh, assisted problem solving so that and typically I've seen 50 sets should be enough for a student to understand what, what to do. But uh, for the even for the worst case, even for the for the slowest learner, we've made sure that we've done 200 to 50 sets so that there's no dearth of content or, or high quality uh, learning uh, available to you. But, but bottom line is how much of assisted problem solving you do, if you don't do your 200 to 50 sets of self problem solving, you are going to be dead in the exam because inside the exam, the problem will test you and only your self problem solving can give you the confidence to be able to cross over those, those barriers that you face in the exam. So the preparation cycle in, uh, in, in DI uh, has to be split into two parts. Uh, the first part is you start doing the traditional data and prediction uh, sets. So data and prediction is, is in two parts, traditional and logical da data and prediction uh, sets. So what traditional data and prediction sets do? is they focus on just your ability to read data and extract data based on the formulas presented in the question. So, so there's no not, not much data analysis, uh, maybe just 5% data analysis in a question. And mostly it's about can you read the data and can you understand the data and can you extract the right numbers to do the calculations. So typically my advice is 
in in this 25 sets of assisted problem solving followed by maybe around 100 sets of practice should should sort your traditional dia uske baad kya hoga ki you will start seeing that sab kuch repetitive ho jata hai to 100 sets of practice ke baad traditional dia karne ka zyada matlab nahi hai you should then move your entire preparation onto logical dia which is data interpretation with uh, which which involves reading data it involves extracting data it also involves analyzing data and along with that it also involves logical reasoning clues which are inserted into data interpretation situations so that is traditional logical di and and most of the times in cat you now have logical di questions but sometimes they do give uh, traditional di questions also because uh, this kind of division is not there in in uh, the definition of cat it's something that we have observed i have observed and, and built my books around that so so typically the thumb rule is 50 sets of assisted problem solving uh, in logical di followed by around 150 to 200 sets of self problem solving so this should complete your your logical uh, your your data and prediction uh, cycle completely and then of course just like in reasoning when you hit the tests the mock tests etc and you start doing the previous year cat papers you start asking yourself this question ki okay how, how am i at di am i have i sorted it out am i am i finding myself on a strong footing inside my mocks am i finding myself in strong footing when i'm doing the mock past year mock mock papers past year uh, cat papers and their sets if yes you close your di preparation you say that okay now i'm just maintaining and improving my efficiency but if you find yourself you are short you you still need more more then the tool is the same i pick up 25 sets i pick up 50 sets i pick up 75 sets more of logical di and my book itself has has more than 400 500 sets in traditional plus logical di so you will have enough study material if you add the previous year cat papers and you add the mock test papers you are more than sorted with respect to how much you need resource wise to learn it utne mein nahi seekhoge to kabhi nahi seekhoge di so this is the process and uh, as i said evaluate uh, keep doing the process evaluate and how quickly you need to do it depends on your timeline work will remain the same uh, whether you are preparing a 3 month framework or a 6 month framework or a 10 month framework the work will remain the same but <clears throat> the and the process will remain the same uh, you will have to do that work how much you do on a weekly basis etc you can define based on these numbers so i hope this video is useful for all of you uh, do give us more ideas and do give us more love uh, subscribe to the channel do press the bell icon so that any time we we come uh, uh with with new content you can actually uh, share this thing